All right, hello everyone from Cannon Beach. Today I'm at the Oregon coast. As you can see, I'm making some images around here. A video from here is coming uh, pretty soon. But today I wanted to talk about something else. Today I wanted to talk about the Bronica, about labels in photography and why we shouldn't self-impose uh, labels on ourselves. I don't have the Bronica with me on this trip. I already talked about this in a previous video where I explained uh, my reasons why I or how I made that decision. Uh, but that decision of not bringing it, of not having it with me here, has uh, had some uh, consequences, has uh, had an impact on my photography that I believe it has been uh, very positive. I feel like you need a little bit of context to understand what I'm going to be talking about. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a back story. I got the Bronica uh, back in 2017 two to two and a half years ago and since then i've done a lot of work uh, with it and about it not only i've made a lot of images that you've uh, seen here but i've already talked about the camera the lenses i've uh, written about it on my blog uh, i've published articles in other blogs and even the, the magazines like if you for magazine so yeah i've done a lot of uh, work with and about uh, that camera and people uh, started to identify me as uh, the Bronica guy and I started to identify myself that way as well. I was actually promoting myself that way. That was one of the main selling points of, uh, for, for me that I was uh, shooting the Bronica, I was shooting film. Now don't get me wrong, by the Bronica guy I don't mean the only one shooting Bronicas, of course there are a lot of photographers out there shooting Bronicas, but the guy who shoots uh, only with the Bronica. And that was very accurate, that was uh, real, that was true, because uh, for, uh, for over a year, the Bronica was my only and main camera. I sold my full frame digital camera once I, I bought the Bronica, and that was the only one that I used for photography for over a year. Of course, I had my digital video camera that I used every once in a while to take some snapshots. By 99% of my work was done with the Bronica and on medium format film. There you go. A little bit better. Uh, as I was saying, over time I built an, an audience around the, the Bronick and around the fact that I was uh, shooting film and uh, everything was uh, fine because I loved the camera and I loved uh, shooting uh, film. And then we decided to make a little change in our lives. We decided to move out of Portland. We decided to hit the road and see where life uh, would bring us. And it's led us to uh, spend some significant time in five different countries in the last year. So we love this, uh, the, the place where we are at now. And it's been uh, very good for my photography. Uh, but it's, not, it's been not that good for my film photography because uh, you see, when I uh, used to live here in Poland, I had my own place. We were renting out a place. So I, had, I didn't have a dark room or anything like that, but I had my little setup with my developing tanks, my chemicals, my scanner, everything. So I would just go on trips, come back home with uh, one, two, ten rolls of film. I would develop them, scan them and share them. Uh, on social media, here on YouTube, everywhere. So that uh, was all good until we uh, hit the road. We lived uh, off a car for two months, so we had to fit everything that we owned at that moment in, uh, in the car. Uh, at first I was uh, kind of in denial because I, I brought everything with me. I brought the chemicals, I brought the 100 rolls of film, I brought the scanner, and I kept shooting film and I was developing uh, all this film on the road from Airbnbs, uh, hotels. I had to cool down a lot of times chemicals because uh, they were very hot from spending time in Palm Springs in California or Death Valley where temperatures uh, reached like 80 or 85 degrees and I, I had the chemicals in the box on the, on the roof of the car so I'm pretty sure that it was uh, like over a hundred degrees there so I had to cool down the, the chemicals other times uh, the fixer I found the fixer frozen after spending a couple nights in the Alabama Hills also in, uh, in Arizona it was also frozen and then weird situations like if you've been to the Hoover Dam you know you have to go through a security checkpoint to drive uh, on the dam itself and they, they stopped me and they asked me to to open the, the the box in the roof and I was like yeah sure why not I opened the box and yeah there were all the, the chemicals there so uh, everything was fine at the end I didn't ruin any images even though I didn't store the chemicals and the under the right uh, conditions uh, the, the film was in a cooler but it was getting hot and cold all the time so it wasn't uh, being properly stored either and that's the thing you know uh, one thing is to have uh, your chemicals and your scanner and all that for film 
uh, on the shelf at your house or at your apartment. A <laughs> completely different thing is to have all of that in your car on the road and when you're moving all the time. But at that moment, I was completely focused on the road trip. I didn't think about it, so I kept shooting film. Then we decided to make yet another little change to our lives. We, we were liking being on the road and seeing new places, but it wasn't enough. Uh, so we decided to do the same in Europe. We moved overseas, we sold the car, and all of a sudden I found myself without, a, without the possibility of actually bringing everything with me, everything that I needed to develop the film on the, on the road. So I started shooting digital and I think it was a healthy mix of some digital work and some analog work. I set up two uh, main developing points, stations or places for me that it was uh, my par at my parents in Spain and at my in-laws in the US. The idea behind this was, okay, I can go on trips and I can be on the road for one, two, three months at a time. We're always gonna go back to my parents or uh, Rachel's parents and that's when I could develop film. Uh, and I could have a mix of digital and analog work. And that was the idea. That transition though from uh, completely analog to a mix of analog and digital didn't go that well uh, with a small part of the audience, but overall, above all, it didn't go well uh, with me because I, I had that stigma, you know, that uh, I was the Veronica guy, the one who shot only with the Veronica. And I couldn't see, I couldn't really see myself making the same images, making the same art, if you will, uh, with the digital cameras that I had. But since I was using the Bronica, I didn't think much of it, and I just kept shooting with both digital and analog. And then we got to this uh, point in time where we were uh, heading back to the US for a few months to visit family and friends and just going on more photography trips. And I just can't bring the Veronica this time with me because it's too big and too heavy. We learned quite a few lessons on the road during this last year and a half. And we travel very light right now and we know how much easier that makes our lives. We know how, how painful it is to bring a lot of stuff with you. So the Veronica was not an option for this trip. But those uh, little doubts that I was uh, that I had been having in the previous month, uh, previous months about not being able to create art with my digital camera, all of a sudden that was a huge problem because I wasn't going to have the Veronica with me at all. It was going to be all digital, so it was uh, hard. It was a struggle for me. I knew I couldn't bring it with me, but it was still uh, a struggle to actually leave it behind. And this is where I am right now. As you know, we just uh, came back from a three week long road trip across the Southwest. And all I used was my digital camera. And man, I couldn't be happier with the results. I was a very productive road trip, probably the most productive road trip I've ever done. I am uh, very happy with the images that I made. I'm very proud of them and the work and the effort that it took to make them, even though they were made in digital. Not having the Veronica with me forced me to look at my digital camera as a tool to create art because it was my only tool. So it was uh, creating art with my digital camera, not creating anything at all. So I started to see the digital camera more the way that I see the Veronica. And I finally, I can say that finally, I broke that label, that tag that I gave myself uh, of uh, being the Veronica guy. I shattered that uh, stigma that I had and uh, now I feel free as uh, much as the Bronica has uh, helped me with my photography, as much as the Bronica has uh, taught me about photography, it also made me feel trapped. I mean, it was not the camera's fault, it was my own fault, but it made me feel trapped because I, I, I felt like I could only create with that camera and now I feel more liberated and relieved that I can do that with my digital camera as well. My advice here is don't impose labels on yourself. Don't call yourself anything photographer, not even landscape photographer, because that kind of closes the door to whatever uh, might inspire you in the future. Maybe in the future you want to take photos in the street. Maybe you want to do portraits, whatever you want to do. So I think that labels are uh, limiting uh, and they can actually hold you back. They have held me back in the past. Uh, so they might do the same to you. So I, I would advise not to use any of those labels. Uh, for me, I see myself as of right now, 
as an artist, I'm going to call myself that, not even a photographer, because in the future I might just want to draw or paint. So I want to uh, remain as flexible and as op and open as uh, possible. And whoever finds and stumbles upon my work in the future, they hopefully are not going to look at me as a uh, the Bronica guy or as the photographer who shoots in black and white in a square just because I've been doing it for too long but I'm I'm gonna try not to sell myself not to promote myself that way and hopefully that helps well this has been already a very long video and I need to keep moving and keep making images of this amazing place but I just wanted to say thank you so much to all of you who have been with me on this uh, long journey Allah a few of you have been from the very beginning when I was shooting digital uh, a lot more joined when I switched to film and a lot of you are still here even though I shoot uh, digital and analog now, not only the Bronica. Uh, by the way, I can't wait to reunite with my Bronica and just one month time I will be shooting a lot of film, a lot of film. I promise that it's coming, but for now it's going to be digital and that's going to be fine. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.